Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are a 10-minute talk that gives a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Ben Ramsey talking about identify all the things with UUIDs. Please make sure you visit Join Dan after the talk and leave him some feedback. Ben, take it away. All right, thanks, Joe. So um, as Joe said, that I, my, my name is Ben Ramsey, and I uh, will give just a brief introduction to myself. I am a uh, web developer, author, and speaker. I'm a software architect at Shootproof, where I build a SaaS platform that helps professional photographers manage their studios and sell prints to their clients. I work remotely from Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been in and around the PHP community for uh, about, I don't know, 13 years now. Um, I am a co-author of the Zen PHP 5 Certification Study Guide. I've also, uh, I'm also one of the organizers for the National PHP User Group, and I founded the Atlanta PHP User Group. I've uh, contributed array column to the PHP core, and I am the maintainer of the Ramsey UUID library, which I'm talking about today, and the League OAuth 2 client uh, package. So this is a talk that I'm working on expanding into a larger talk, and in the few minutes that we have, I would like to give a high-level overview of UUIDs, and then show how to use the Ramsey UUID library to generate each type of UUID. I'm going to try to say UUID a lot of times, and I hope that I won't uh, get my tongue tied up. So what is a UUID? Well, it's a universally unique identifier. And the neat thing about UUIDs is that um, there are about 16 to the 32nd possible UUIDs. And according to Wikipedia, only after generating 1 billion UUIDs every second for the next 100 years, the probability of creating just one duplicate would be about 50%. So the chance of you creating a duplicate is very low. Uh, and that gives us the ability to uh, generate any UUID on any um, system that you're running and you can pass it into the same kind of central data store and be fairly certain that you're not going to have a collision. Uh, although in a few minutes I'll talk a little bit about collisions um, because we did experience those with the uh, Ramsey UUID library. It's essentially, or it is, just a 128-bit in integer. And it's represented in a hexadecimal format like this with 32 uh, uh, characters uh, separated by dashes. So this is just a string representation of a 128-bit integer. And there are several types of UUIDs, but the specific variant is defined in RFC 4122. This defines a variant that has five different versions of UUID. So it's these five different versions that I want to focus on. So first of all, uh, we'll focus on them using the Ramsey U UUID library, and you can get this library very easily through uh, Packagist. Just install it with Composer. Composer require Ramsey UUID. And then all of the examples in, in the rest of this presentation are going to just assume that you're already using namespaces. And so at the top of your, your script, you might have something like use Ramsey UUID UUID. And this way, I don't have to put that on every slide. So the first type of UUID is a time-based UUID. The time-based UUID is uh, based on uh, the current timestamp, which isn't a Unix timestamp. It's actually a 100 nanosecond interval timestamp since October 1582. I think it's October 15th. Uh, this date is not an arbitrary date. It's actually uh, the date the Gregorian calendar begins. And so UUIDs that are time-based are based on a, on a timestamp from the Gregorian calendar, or from the very beginning of the Gregorian calendar. And then also in the time-based UUID is uh, the MAC address for the machine on which the machine um, on which the UUID was generated. So let's take a quick look at how that looks. So with the Ramsey UUID library, uh, it provides a very clean, uh, kind of easy to use interface. 
there's a lot of complexity that goes on behind the scenes, but the interface uh, just to get a UUID is very simple. And each UUID that gets returned is an object, and then you can call to string on it, or you can just cast it to a string, and it will uh, it'll be it'll represent a string. So I wanted to show kind of what this looks like if we were in a loop generating uh, version one UUIDs because you'll notice something here that's very interesting. So we're generating, generating five UUIDs and we'll print them out. And if you look at these, you'll notice that they look very similar and, and they don't look very random at all. And that's because these are the time-based ones. So if you start seeing this, you know, I, I had people ask questions um, they wonder why is this not as random as I would expect. Well, it's because you're using a time-based UUID. So if you look at the far right there, you'll see uh, that's the MAC address of my machine, uh, everything after the last dash. And then if you look at the left side, you'll see some similarities uh, and they're kind of uh, counting up a little bit. So that's version one. Version two, I'm not going to really cover because um, this is not explicitly defined in RFC 4122, uh, but it is the DCE, or Distributed Computing uh, Environment uh, Security uh, UUID. It's very similar to the version one UUID. The only difference is it adds like the current user ID into the, um, into the, the integer. Uh, so we won't go over that because the Ramsey UUID library and most any other UUID library you'll encounter do not implement this. Version 3 is the name-based UUID uh, version, and it's an MD5 hash of a name. So I'll explain that. Uh, the first part is you'll create a namespace, and UUID also defines several different namespaces. Uh, one of them is, is shown right here in this first uh, uh, three, uh, four lines, and that's the namespace DNS uh, uh, namespace. <laughs> Excuse me. We can strike that. The first four lines here uh, show the creation of a namespace UUID using the DNS namespace, which is a predefined UUID. And we're going to create one for nomadphp.com. So this gives us our namespace. This is set in stone. Uh, this won't change no matter how many times we create it. It will always be the same UUID. <coughs> Excuse me. This is helpful because now we can use that as a namespace identifier to create a whole bunch of identifiers within that namespace. So for example, if I have a URL and I want to create a unique UUID for that URL, I can do so here by giving it the nomad PHP namespace and then the string for the URL. This gives me a page identifier in this case uh, that is a UUID and it looks like this. This UUID will not change. Given the same exact values, it will always appear like this. Now, there is another version of this we'll take a look at in a minute, but this is hashed using MD5. Now, the version 4 UUID is the random version, and this is the one that most everyone is more familiar with because this is the one most people are trying to get when they, when they use UUID. So if we have a loop here where we generate four uh, version 4 uh, I'm sorry, five version four UID. They come out looking like this, all very random. Uh, there is one part, excuse me, there are two parts to, of this UID that are not random. And if you look there kind of in the, uh, the, the left middle block, there's four characters surrounded by dashes. Uh, the leftmost one is the number four. And this is significant because this identifies the version of this UUID. This is a version 4 UUID. Uh, then if you look over into the next block of 4, you'll see either a 9, 8, or the letter A. <clears throat> this is uh, identifying the variant. So half of the, um, the byte here is identifying the var variant. And this is obviously uh, RFC version, or RFC 4122 variant. All of the UUIDs that are in that variant have, uh, have uh, specific letters and numbers there. All right, finally, version 5 name based SHA 1 UUID is um, just like the version 3 UUID, but uh, this is hashed using SHA 1. 
So this is the one that is uh, most recommended, although version three is still provided for backwards compatibility. <clears throat> and it looks exactly the same. So we create our namespace, and in this case we're using nomadphp.com, and then we can create uh, a UID based on that namespace. And as expected, this one looks very different from the version three one because it is hashed differently, but no matter how many times we generate this with the same values, it will always have the same uh, outcome. It'll always be the same UUID. So I wanted to touch on just a couple of advanced features uh, real quick, and uh, then we'll, we'll leave it here so you can go kind of explore the library on your own and find out what, what other features there might be. Uh, there are different things you might want to do with a UUID. You might not want to um, uh, have it look like the, they normally do. So for example, let's say we have a version 4 UUID, but we want to create a sequential random UUID. That sounds a little bit uh, counterintuitive, but there are reasons why you might want a sequential UUID. We can do this because the U, Ramsey UUID library uh, is fully dependency injected. You saw some um, static methods earlier. Those are just the easy to use interface to get to any version of UUID you want. If you need to do something more complex, you're able to inject your own classes into it, your own generators, your own um, uh, timestamp uh, codecs. So you can do that and have UUIDs generated in a completely different way. So in this case, we're taking uh, our UUID factory and we're going to create a comb generator. And a comb is a, a, a combined GUID UUID um, uh, UUID. So it combines kind of the, the same idea of a GUID and a UUID. And a GUID is really like a UUID. It's almost the same thing, but it's just a different variant if you want to think about it that way. And in this case, we're also using the timestamp first comb codec, which is going to rearrange some of the uh, bytes. And when it gives us an output, the, the output, uh, we're going to use the same random generator, uh, or we're going to set this as the random ge generator, I'm sorry. And then we're going to loop over it, and you'll see our output doesn't look very random. These were sequential. So if you look at the far left, uh, they're all identical up until about like, um, the uh, the tenth column there. Now you'll start seeing that it's kind of increasing in uh, sequence, and that is a a comb sequential UUID. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope that now you know a little bit more about UUIDs, and you also know that there's a lot more you can do with them. Uh, I did mention earlier at the beginning of the the talk that uh, I had encountered some collisions. UUIDs, and I failed to come back to that, so I'll, I'll mention that briefly right now. Uh, there is a blog post, if you see this link here, bram.se slash ramsey-uuid, that goes into more detail, but essentially we were using OpenSSL pseudo-random uh, bytes to generate random bytes. Um, in most scenarios, that should always give us random bytes. However, in a threaded environment like PHP sometimes runs in Apache or Nginx, uh, if the uh, child processes are spawned and um, uh, from one main process, then they continue to kind of loop over the same randomness all the time. So once they get through this that, that they started with, they'll loop over it. Uh, so we started having people uh, with um, uh, hit collisions in their UUIDs, which was very perplexing. We, we sat on that for several months before we figured out what was going on. Uh, so we've taken out the use of OpenSSL, and now we're using uh, random bytes in PHP 7, and we're using the random compat library uh, to, to simulate random bytes, and it does not use OpenSSL anymore. So that was a very harrowing kind of thing because UUIDs, as we mentioned earlier, should not collide. Uh, and now they don't, not in the Ramsey UUID library. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your, uh, uh, your patience and uh, your attention, and uh, I'll hand it back over to Joe. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit, join in, and leave Ben some feedback. 